and let them have dominion. The kingdom of God is within people. It's the advancement of the people that is advancing. Because of the faith must be backed by the assignment of this ministry is found from that verse. Where we You're onto a word encounter as Pastor David Ogweli ministers God's word to you with simplicity and power. God bless you. He created them to control the earth, to control the circumstances on earth, just like God controls the heavenly. The cause come from people for relying on self. You see these people who call themselves self-made people, who think it's their talent, it's their wisdom. I was the best student my school produced, secondary school. So I, I just naturally relied on my, on my skills, on my intelligence, on my ability. I went through hell. It took seven years of my life. This guy got his own probably for 20 years. It didn't take me that long, but seven years. If you don't know why Moses spent 40 years in the wilderness, it was self-confidence that God was trying to break. Being trained in Egypt, being raised in Pharaoh's house, he thought, when he, he, he saw the future, he saw that vision that he was going to deliver the people. But can you imagine how he thought he was going to do it? He was going to cause war in Egypt. He has started killing a few people. Just trust him for the day he will be able to now lead a mass rebellion. It will be like Rwanda genocide. Probably he wouldn't have survived it. Or God maybe would have protected him because of whatever. But serve the lion. People who trust in themselves. Who rely on their abilities. You know, when I got to the end of myself, the prayer that I began to pray in those days, Lord, I have toiled all night, seven years, and caught nothing. All I have here is an empty boat. What can God do with a self-made man? At the end of the day, the glory will go to you. God had to use hammer to break all that for me. And in that seven years, I went through a series of experiences. A series of experiences. Everything I'm telling you, everything I know of failed. This pastor that you have now is one that came after I wrestled with this angel of God. And I still have marks in my body, a mark in my being of, of what happened. I don't ever want to cross that place. You know, the end of that rope is that I wanted to commit suicide. A good boy wanted to drink poison. I wouldn't have known grace. There is no way I would have understood grace. There is no way. I probably would teach him moral instruction thinking I'm preaching the gospel. There's nothing. There's no way I would have understood it. There's no way. There's no way I would have understood the cross. Yeah, I know Jesus died, but he, he didn't make it make any sense. He didn't, you know, even if he didn't forgive me, I was good. Because you compare yourself with others and, and say that most of the sins that are committing, I'm not committing. I gave my life to Christ at the age of 12. Have you ever seen where somebody goes to intensive care unit for oppression? He will stay two hours, go home, come back. He will tell the doctor halfway in the middle of the oppression, I need to go and see my husband or my children. Then he will come back and lay back again. He said, put a new anesthesia. Continue from where you stop. Have you ever seen that? You stay there sometimes till they are through. And you stay there till the healing process is completed. When they release you back to society, you are a healed whole person. Is that not how it is done? It's surgery you can hear for. I'm sure by now it's becoming clearer and clearer. The cause of Jacob, the cause of failure, is because of self. Because of self. Self reliance. The second reason why that cause comes is that many people 
because they think they can succeed, they are gifted enough. They fail to submit to the plan of God for their lives. You know, it's the same thing that happened to Jonah. Is that cause? Go to Nineveh, he took off to Tarshish. So a tempest came out in that journey till he found himself in the belly of the well. Some of us are inside the well of the belly of the well right now. Financially, that's where you are. You know the plan of God for your life. You know that you're carrying a calling. You know what it is. You know what God wants you to do. But you need to finish your own plan first. That is what is causing the problem. In the case of Jacob, actually, he didn't know. I think I need to explain something to you. This teaching is called the quest for authentic manhood. A young man is born. He's a boy, a child. But he really wants to become a man. He wants to become successful. He wants to become who, you know, God has made him to be. But you see how he goes about it. There are five wounds that keep men from becoming maximized men. And there is the same problem with womanhood. But it's different for women when compared to men. Now, I'm going to make this explanation so that you ladies will see part of your problems. And then the men will be able to see what is wrong. Tonight, when you come to the cross, trust God to fix up this area of your life. Can I hear an amen? Manhood has four faces. Like God, the Godhead has four faces. The Godhead has the face of an ego. And the face of a man on the other side. Then here you have the face of a lion and the face of a donkey. Remember we are made in the image of God. Manhood has four faces. God is a lion, but God is also a man. Do you know that God doesn't look like monkeys? When you see him, you're actually designed like him. As a matter of fact, your body looks like your human spirit. If you minus the, all those other things that, the wounds, the marks, extra thing. This is how Hussein will look in heaven. Just that it will be in a glorified state. Jesus, after the the resurrection, looks like Jesus before the resurrection. But the difference is the glory of that body. His body shines like the sun and all of those other whatever. But he's the same person. If I leave my body, I sit down here, bend my head like that, and leave my body and come outside, and you meet me outside, it's the same me you will see. So, the same way, God, on the other hand, is a lion, but he's also a man. You can't find God, try to identify with anyone that he identified, because we are his image. God is like the ego. And at the same time, he's like an oxen. An oxen is... An animal of sacrifice. That when you talk about this servant leadership, why on the other hand is a lion? On the other side is a donkey. If you are approaching the throne of God, this is what you are going to see in heaven after the rapture. You see these living creatures that surround the throne with four faces. You look here, you are seeing a lion. He turns his back, you see a donkey. This is priest and king. That's what he's illustrating. And in those four qualities that he put in man. This is king. This is a servant. The one that can be sacrificed. On the altar. That's what Jesus did. Then you look on the other side. You see the ego. Ego always symbolizes spirit. Divinity. You look the opposite. You see a man. 
the face of a man. You are spirit at the center, you are a human being. You are God at the center, you are human. So, manhood has four faces. So, I'm going to use other languages to say it. The first face is the face of a king. That's the face of a leader. Now, now you will see what he's teaching us now. These wounds, these wounds rob a man of leadership. From inside him, he becomes a coward. He doesn't have vision. He doesn't have, leadership has conviction. He, he lacks it. He doesn't have direction. The second phase of a man is a warrior. You know, the king is a lion. The warrior now, what I mean by warrior is a hunter. What I mean by hunter is not, I, 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 I prefer not to use that word. Because that's not the word. It's not the transactional application of hunter. What we mean here is that the second face of a man is a provider. He's the one that will go conquer, get resources, and provide for his family. When you see a man, he's a failure in his career. He's a failure in his job. He, he, he comes home, he's depending on his wife for sustenance. Or he's still depending on his parents. As a man is beyond 25 years, something is wrong. There is a wound that is carried that has not been healed. I will show you what it is. That's what the study of Jacob shows us. How to heal the wounds of manhood. There are five wounds that cripple men inside them. The third phase of manhood is the face of a lover. For example, the kingly face has righteous energy. That's what produces a reformer. Every man is supposed to hate ungodliness. Every man is supposed to have values. And you see a reason why many of us don't. But this face of a lover, ladies need to know about it, is that every man has this other energy trapped in his system. It's this passion that burns his, in his system. And many a time, it expresses itself physically. It's sexual energy. Don't play with a man. You ladies like to hug, like to touch, but don't want to do anything. Don't go arousing a man thinking he's like you. A man doesn't want to touch and hug. A man wants to eat yam. You know when you keep goat and yam? Don't go and lie with a man on the bed. He say he is holy, he is pastor. Somewhere in the night, there is something God put in him that is going to turn with all his holiness. Spirituality does not cancel sexuality. Get it clear. Even though you have come to encounter, don't live here thinking that the encounter has removed your sexual energy. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? A man is a lover. That's how God designed him. As powerful, as strong, as a warrior as he is, at the laps of a woman is a baby. Every man is like that. They carry this thing called romantic energy that softens them. Don't fight a man at the angle of a lion if you're a wise woman. If you're a wise woman, you want to get something from him. He's a lion. You confront him that he eats you up. He destroys you. That's what some stupid women do. But if you want to get him... He can sign all his earning. Take him to the laps of Delilah. No, 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 no not Delilah. <laughs> but that's what Delilah used, in case you don't know. That's why. <laughs> that's, that's what Delilah used. Satan sends ladies that are trained that understand that business. Just wear some stuff, whatever. Come in the house, pretend that she's cleaning table for you. Are you hungry? <laughs> Lo and behold, that's what we call it. There is something that's trying to awaken. When that thing awakens, it calms the lion down. 
the lion becomes an animal you can tame. The lady is trying to get something from the husband. The husband is, is just, ah, don't talk to me about it. Don't worry. Activate the other side. There's some of you, there are some of the things we ban, you shouldn't wear out. You shouldn't wear in church. You should know that's at home. Hmm? <laughs> and there are some when you finish wearing, add high heel on top. So you, you have V boot position. Just just walk past in the parlor. Do, do you care for soft drink or for somebody's gonna pursue you to the kitchen, pursue you to everywhere? That is how he walks, he doesn't like coming home. You don't know anything. You don't know anything. It's the type you set up, he will break office for the afternoon to come home. Romantic energy is trapped in every man. Then the third face of a man is the face of a friend. Loyalty. This one is not for women. It's what they have between them and their fellow men. That's why I will show you the wounds now. When a man doesn't develop a relationship with fellow men, comradeship, I'm talking about the face of covenant. Men die for each other. That's why if you see them in warfare, you see soldiers, men, men, that's why you see them, they join courts. Why the church is weak with reaching men is that men are looking for loyalty. Men are looking for covenant. Men are looking for a place of refuge and strength. Where they link up with fellow men and conquer. The relationship with a woman doesn't meet all of a man's needs. That stuff is in God too. That his side you call the oxen, the lamb, is about laying down life for others. It's the side that the Bible calls Jehovah. It's the covenant keeping side. It's the blood shedding side that I can die for you. Why are men struggling? Ah. Five wounds inflicted on men, and in the case of Jacob, it started in the womb. But for many men, the moment men are born, since the fall of man, these problems have been here. The church must know how to heal it if we are going to recover society. And I think I need to say this this foundation of the society was laid on the male man. God had the woman in mind from day one. Bible says male and female created Eden. But he wanted to set the divine order. So he created the male man first. After the foundation is that he now pulled out the woman. When Jesus was laying the foundation of the church, he called 12 men and entered covenant with them at the communion table before he went to die. He did not do that with any of the ladies. He, he loves Mary Magdalene and all that. None of them was invited to that place. The foundation of the church was laid with a male man. The foundation of the family was laid. The foundation is the man. That's why yesterday we're dealing with foundation. It's about the sins of the fathers. Not the sins of the mothers. You know, I gave you a digression yesterday. Maybe I should also give you the balance of it. Because somebody said, okay, but are you not the one that told us now that uh, Jacob's wahala came from the mother? True. When you finish laying foundation, the blocks that now make the beauty make contribution. But that's not what shapes the destiny of a child. As a matter of fact, that thing that you call the mother's family problem is actually the father's family problem. What you need to know about that family is that both Abraham and Sarah came from the same family. Both Isaac and Rebecca came from the same extended family. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? So you can now know. Because if you watch Abraham, who arranged to call Sarah my sister so they can deceive that king, was it not Abraham? When it was time for Isaac, I want you to know that the 419 is in their house. When it was time for Isaac, he arranged again with Rebecca. You 
say you are my sister. So this king's done. And, and after he has collected wealth from the kings, the king is now found out. Because they wanted to date the sister, only to find out that it was his wife. The king was looking out of the window one evening and saw Isaac and Rebecca playing, you know, just romancing in the field. He sent for them and said, ah, is that your sister that you are doing that with? Abimelech. So you can see the sins of the fathers. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation. That's why it is not the sin of Eve that is running in your gene. It's the sin of who? Adam. If Eve fell and Adam didn't, the human family would not have fallen. And to get things going, you don't need God to incarnate. What you need is Adam to impregnate. Okay, there are five wounds that created a Jacob. So I want to show you what it is. Confused men. They are the ones that destroy society. Until you heal the men, you don't heal the church. Until you heal the men, you don't heal the families. Until you heal the men, you don't heal the society. Now, ladies, don't get left out because I will soon show you where you are now. You will see, you are in the man. And this thing you call marriage is one plus one equals to what? One, not two. The first wound that creates a Jacob, a disoriented man, a failure, struggling. He ends up not being the provider he's supposed to be. He becomes financially dependent. If not on his wife, he's on his parents. You see, a grown up man is still staying in his parents' house. What creates a failure, a Jacob? You see, a man that is supposed to be a leader. There is no vision, there is no leadership. And a woman is going to submit to that thing. Nothing is as frustrating as to be following a car that is parked. When God asks a woman to submit, he meant to submit to a leader a, that is going somewhere, that has a direction. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Because even when your car, your, your light packs up in the middle of the night and you are driving, the easiest way to arrive safe is to creep behind a car that has lights. Just be following that guy behind. The front light plus the one he throws behind, which is vision casting, helps you find your way. Just follow. But then you submit to a man. And a lot of ladies now, what happens is that the frustration gets out of hand. They try to take leadership. They start doing things on their own because they are married to an Ahab. The one that is meant to be a lover becomes an abuser. Becomes cold, critical. If you see how they talk to their wives or talk to Lambassador, because there is no love in them to give. They are empty, they are depleted by rejection. So the only thing they end up becoming is they abuse every woman that comes into everybody. The one that is supposed to be a friend, a covenant keeper, becomes a betrayer. He becomes a lone ranger. You see men that are alone, lonely men. They can't connect with other men. They can't build covenant relationships. You can't trust them. They backstab people, betray people, can't keep their words. There are wounds. These wounds began at home. The problem we face in ministry who are called to become spiritual fathers is that we inherit sons who are already wounded and battered by all kinds of things from home. Let me show you the wounds. The five wounds. Number one is the absent father wound. There is a role a father plays in the raising of a boy. Number two, the overbearing mother wound, what we call the mommy boy wound. A mother doesn't know when to win a boy. He keeps attaching her to himself and keep manipulating his life, controlling his life. He grows up becoming a feminized man. So when it's time to get married, he starts looking for a mother. Because he doesn't have a initiative, he lacks vision, he lacks drive, he is a laid-back man. 
anytime you see. You think it's just to come and run skill. If we are going to heal the nation, we can't start with the skill level. There are issues in men's life that has to be reconstructed first. And then you can now equip them from the earth and then they will call God. You have to train the heart and reprogram the head, the software. And then before you train the hands, the man will go and succeed. So guess what they do? They look for the mother figure because that's how the mother raised them. He's a mother raised boy, a mommy boy. He looks for women that are successful, women that are hardworking, women that are achieving. And many of you ladies that are, are, are success oriented, goal oriented, you are achieving results. Guess who you attract? Mommy boy. You say, no, 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 because I love him. You even sponsor your wedding. You buy him suits. You buy him clothes. Guess what happened after you married him? You are the one feeding the whole family. This is the breadwinner of the family. Sit down and be watching TV. Other men are out there conquering, bringing the spoils back home. He sits down. What he, he wants is sex. Hug. Hug me, mommy. Hug me, mommy. <laughs> even some, I've met some, they even call the wife mommy because that's actually the idea. Some don't say it out that way. But that's actually what they are looking for. The mother destroyed him. You inherit him in ministry. He's laid back. He can't have initiative. Manhood wounds. He's not goal oriented. If you don't talk to him again, go do this. He will stay like that. Five years. Just in one second. But then when you see those of us that are conquering and all that, many are suffering from father's wounds. Absent father wound. That's the problem of Jacob. He has the drive. So he tries to succeed. And for many, the drive is actually to impress their father. Because there are four things a boy needs from the father to be whole. Number one is, I love you. You are my beloved son with whom I am what? Well pleased. Why Jesus was an authentic man, held is that he had that affirmation again and again to the point that when Satan came out trying to talk nonsense in the wilderness, he could not do anything. A man that could not be damaged by Satan is a man that is protected by the love of his father. I want all of you to know, I'm a tough in training. I'm also a liar, you know. You don't know, you are from the tribe of Judah. We carry the dominion mandate. Please, no matter what it is, when you see me, I cry and all that. That's truth about my heart. But if you're not careful, you don't balance the two ends. I believe in every one of you. And I, if I don't, we'll have to send you a packet. Because what are you doing here? And you see, what I have done is the smallest, the beginning of your own destiny. All these things you think God has done with me is just the starting point for you. That's why he put me under you as the foundation. You don't see foundation being taller than the building. That's what Jesus meant by the works that I do that you shall do and greater works than this. I want you guys to be richer than me so that when 70 years and gray hair come, I just sit down and say, ah, Task collectors are disturbing me. You say, who is that? You, with one check, you break the spine of the whatever, whatever. God had to address this for Solomon, especially if you look at the circumstances of his birth. First, David loved him. David mentored him. But second, the Lord came and told Prophet Nathan, go name him Jedid there beloved of the Lord. Because ultimately, when you don't get a father's love, finally, what cures it is transiting from earthly father to heavenly father's love. You have to transit like Jesus that didn't know that thing with, with Joseph because he wasn't his child. He got mentorship, but he couldn't get affirmation. They were always having problems with him. The choice of his life his calling. He had problem with Joseph's sons. His brothers had problem with 
what gave him security was this is my beloved son with whom i'm well pleased it was said a number of times in his life when a man is not there for the ladies you know this thing has both sides what you produce is a girl that lacks security in love so she, she will be going for love she will go after men she will give them her body some of these ladies you see that sleep around doesn't mean that they enjoy sex a lot though. some of them go through pain some of them go through whatever but what their, their own is if this is what will make him love me let him have whatever let him love me whatever it is so some are abused they go, are now abuse all kinds of abuse there is nothing we have not subjecting women to this this no dignity but all for this guy to love me when a dad plays his role in the girl's life you produce a, a woman that is secure a woman that cannot be a toy in the hands of men a woman that can be around guys and not be intimidated a woman that that can actually be because what a woman is supposed to be is a man's companion a man's helpmate not his footmat is somebody hearing what i'm saying the third wound that cripples a man is a blind soul wound blind soul is a lack of vision wound what happens is that that man doesn't have anything to live for he doesn't have a sense of significance he doesn't feel that he's important to his generation he doesn't feel that he's a man on assignment he doesn't have that sense there is something that drives a person like me i know that the plan of god depends on me i know how important and how significant i am in the life of my generation these men are just existing with nothing to live for they don't have a compelling vision in their life so because of the blindness of their soul they lack discipline they can't pay the price there are certain things they cannot go through you pass them through they start crying like women and because of that they fail even in mentorship because until there is a compelling vision you don't submit to the rigorous process of training that comes alongside with mentorship you don't they lack discipline they lack restraint they lack moral values they become laid back in life they just follow the day as they come they live for existence they live by instinct they live as consumers instead as creators that god has made them to be we're made in the image of god the only creature with creative potential because once a vision there's a complete vision then the mind is activated into creativity innovation starts all kinds of all you need is a vision other things will follow it the vision will pull its provision and all the provision are not money some are relationship some are ideas some are opportunities and so on and so forth every man that is empty in his soul and it's this emptiness inside that creates poverty it's not absence of cash no 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 is absence of value that you can offer to your generation it's absence of something bigger than you that you live for a vision is not about you a vision is something bigger than you this is one of the things that a father puts in the heart of the children you are more than just a person who eats and drink there's more to your life than this when the father is prophetic you can use prophetic power to impart it but even if you are not, you can use inspiration. From the age of 12, a father is supposed to mentor his boys. You see, the way a woman is trained is different from the way a man is trained. The Bible said, so shall a man leave father and mother. For a woman, they do it once. In the 21st century, they do it twice. Because a new responsibility has come upon women that didn't used to be there. It wasn't in the original program. So after school, there is physical disengagement for her home, where she is somewhere working, living apart from her home. And then finally, there is you know, final disengagement when she marries her husband. But really, the way God planned it is that that's the only time a woman should leave father and mother. 
it is a marriage. And if she doesn't live properly, she will keep causing problems in her new marriage. Some ladies are married, but they are still emotionally attached to their dad. Just like you have a, a mommy's boy, you have daddy's girl that will not mature into a grown woman. They still go home to some, they have this overbearing mother that is running their marriage for them. Every little thing, a little argument with the husband, it calls home. The mother tells her what? And they end up becoming bitches and daughters of Jezebel. Instead of becoming the helpmate God planned for them to be. Even such women that have given their daughter a man will not know where their boundary is. They will still want to go there, mess up their marriage, meddle with their everything till they ruin it. They reproduce in their daughter's life the same bitter water they had in their own marriage. The problem we are having today is absent father for men, absent mother for women. Because from the age of 12, from the moment a woman enters poverty, her mother steps into mentoring. It's different from what you used to do from age 1 to the, You step into mentoring. You become her mentor. The father for the boy steps into mentoring. But in, in, in for, a boy, for boys, there are four stages of disengagement. The first stage a boy must first disengage from the mother at the age of 12. All that the mother was supposed to do in, in the boy's life, in his upbringing, is within the first 12 years, Moses' mother did an excellent job of letting him know, you are not an Egyptian, you are a Jew. And she knew that her time was limited. And very soon, this guy is going to be adopted, taken in to become Pharaoh's son, and I won't have the opportunity. I better put in the right stop. It is women that develop future leaders of society. And you have about 12 years to do it. The beginning stages of a child development is so critical, and God put the mothers there. That's why we say train a man, you've trained an individual, train a woman, you have trained a family or a society. Women shape society. But then the moment a boy gets to the age of 12, a disengagement must occur. She must disengage from the mom and move towards the father. She, that boy needs to go to the carpentry shop and be mentored in the family trade. Whatever it is that the men have learned. In many cultures, they do manhood ceremony. There's even an initiation ceremony. In this part of the world, they do masquerade. That's when they initiate you. They don't wait for you to be tired. In, in some part of the eastern Nigeria, they do other type of masquerade or, 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 or ceremony. And then they, they win you for your mom. It's time. Wise parents will even look at the kind of games your boys play at that moment and change it. Let me make this statement. When a boy gets to five, maximum seven, he is going to start resenting women handling him. When they are newly born, mommy, boy, all that is allowed at that point. When he gets to five, you send a lady to bath him, he's supposed to resent it. His manhood is supposed to start as a dog. What some people don't know is that they beat him. What are you beating him for? What he's doing is God-ordained part. He's following the God-ordained part. I saw a nine-year-old boy, naked, and they were even buffing him in the open because I was walking into their yard to visit another family in the open, nine-year-old, and they spanked him at the button, and then they, they called the mom. He's a girl, a bigger sister. I was buffing him, and he was saying, I can buff my... Ah, ah, and they, they didn't let him. The mother now came and took the sponge. Oh, yeah! <laughs> that is emasculating a man. At the end of the day, you are going to have a female man, a feminized man, that can't pursue anything, can't hunt. When you see even antelope will be passing in the front, they can't catch it. <laughs> children will be dying of hunger. The wife and children will have to feed him. Mommy's boy. You, at the age your boy gets to, you need to start checking the games that play. Maybe his only boy surrounded with sisters. So you see him, don't you go and carry sisters' pants where? Even you see some testing with black. It's time to pull them. If you have the accommodation, move him away to boys' room. Separate him from the girls' room. Sitting there watching the ladies dressing up and all that. From 12, he should get involved in the carpentry shop. And he has another 12 years of mentorship. Really? 21 is another disengagement but in Africa here, 21 is still in the in school. 
why other people are becoming multi-millionaire at 18, 19, in some part of the world, he's still in second year. So he comes home, daddy, school fees, at that age. But you see, at, the, at this moment, the mentorship phase and plus the education is completing. He disengages physically from home. You see, he has disengaged emotionally from mommy. Now he disengages physically because he has to go and get a job. He leaves home. And then the next thing is that he disengages financially. He stops collecting money. Actually, the father should stop giving him money. It's time for him to go and prove his manhood. Learn how to hunt. Why you still give the girls? You don't starve girls of money. But ultimately, you give inheritance to the boys, not to the girls. You can give them gifts. So all that thing that the boy is not getting at, but everything is his. So, but he needs to go and become a man first. They did the right thing by sending Jacob away from home. If not, he would sit down, depending on his own father's wealth. He wouldn't have created his own destiny. Then, if this disengagement is properly done, he learns to create world feed himself, then he prepares him finally to add weight because he's going to feed a woman and children. He has learned to pay his own rent, to buy his own car, to buy his own clothes, all those things that they used to do for him. He is now ready for the final disengagement. So shall a man leave father and mother and cleave to his wife and the two shall become what? One. When you meet such a man, he's a real man. The woman that marries him is safe. It's not where his, his mother comes to run his new family. When the mother comes, the boy puts the mother where? Yes. This is where you stop, my dear. As much as I love you as my mom, you can't manipulate me. This is my family. This is my wife. You don't come to my house to slap my wife. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Let's put it in perspective. You have to realize that there are wounds that produce those things. Let's heal this nation. God is trusting us to do it. Why are many men not thinking like that? Why do they live from hand to mouth just for their stomach, only for today? It's a wound, a blind soul wound. A blind soul wound. The fourth wound is the Lone Ranger wound. The Lone Ranger wound is um, always on his own, always by himself. That's men who can connect with fellow men. Men who can establish covenants. Men who lack integrity completely can be trusted. So they can build great businesses because you need to work with other great people to build a large company. They can build great ministries. Everything is just that their small world. Men whose world cannot expand beyond themselves. No ranger wound. They go to university, their book, to classroom, whatever. If there is anything they get interested in, it might be a woman. Some don't get interested in anything at all. They are lonely men. Many of them commit suicide. Some don't commit suicide. Some are into drugs. Some are into all sorts of things to help keep their word. Some just addicted to TV. Some is pornography. They prefer to be on the net watching naked women than to be with their fellow men and play football. That one that you see, that's always whatever. If you see the atrocities that go on, I'm sure you have heard wise men said that an idol life is the devil's word. The mind is messed up. If you see what goes on, and that their privacy. They are the ones who rape little children of six. They are the ones who can rape an old woman. You hear of young people raping old women. There's nothing we're not hearing. They are the ones who sleep with sheep. Sleep with goats. What is the problem? You can't even chase a woman. To talk to an ordinary woman. What happened? It's a wound. 
in relationship with his father and they had a relationship with brothers who have helped but it didn't happen okay in relationship with other boys other men who have helped develop him no they can't even look a woman in the eye just to tell a woman i love you you see proposal is a big headache then when some of them come into christianity they hide under prophecy and under spiritual witchcraft They don't know how to show anybody love. You need healing, my dear. I say you need healing. And your deliverance has come on. The last wound of manhood is what is called the heart depravity wound. That is the depravity of the human heart. This particular last wound cannot be cured by a father or mother. If you like, train your boy so well. After all the raising them in church, you will see that there is something about their nature that is inclined towards sin, towards evil. The good that I want to do, I do not. It's the evil I don't want to do, I find myself. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. You see, when you are not home, you see a guy playing with girls. You see, the young boy growing up, He's already watching. You see, the thing just keep pulling them towards. The only cure for the heart depravity wound are only two things. Can I show you at least the cure for that one? Eh? Okay, let's do a rush cure for all of them. But this is the most critical. The only cure for this, which is why many of us are struggling. Stop smoking, you can't. Stop that womanizing, you can't. Stop that alcoholism, you can't. Stop that drug thing, you can't. Okay, you inside you want to be a good husband. But see, you are still beating your wife. What is that? The inclination. This problem did not come for your father. This one came from Adam. That's why men are rebels. That's why men fight wars. That's why they become armed robbers. That's why they become cultists. That's why they do ritual murder. That's why they do assassination. That's why they do all sorts of things. And the parents will be crying. I brought him up well. Uh, even if you are a good father, you were there for your children, you were a mother, you did your job well. You people have to tackle this one. The only cure for this is the cross. The second cure is when a man transits from father's love to his heavenly father's love. That's one of the reasons why the father of the prodigal son, when he came back, did not throw him away. God was showing us. And those of us who are preachers should be careful. After raising your daughter well, maybe something goes wrong, she gets pregnant. You throw her away because she is a preacher's daughter. No. No, don't do that. He said, you have disgraced your father's office. No, don't do that. Oh, you have finished training that boy well. And you probably sent him to school. You, he came back. You heard that he's smoking. You, you, you disown him. Don't do that. That's the time. It's something. Introduce because your love can go so far. No matter what you do for your child, it can only take them so far. The final thing that transits a man, a woman to greatness is transiting from earthly father to heavenly father. Transiting from earthly mother to a relationship with the Holy Ghost. Transiting from a struggle with my flesh, with my fallen nature to the revelation of the cross. Four things a man needs to cure the first wound, the father's wound. First, I love you. Second, I believe in you. When a father exercises confidence in his son, that boy will go and conquer the world and bring the thing to you like this. Third, you can follow my example. The third is a set of values and principles that you live by. You say, look, at, watch me. This is how I do it, and this is why I do it. It is the whys of life. The whys of life. A father must give a code of conduct to his son. 
you don't do this. You don't beat a woman. Mm -mm. Instead, enter your car, take a drive. Let your anger come back. back. Don't do that. You don't say this to an elder. Mm -mm. You don't do this to a brother. Mm -mm. A set of conduct. But to succeed in that, you have to leave it. So you can tell him, watch me. Did you see the last time I was very angry with your mom? Did you see what I did? Did you notice that on Tuesday, the two of us were locked inside the room? It was when we talked about that. Thing. You don't talk to your wife in the presence of children or in the presence of outsiders. You don't talk down. But you see that time we locked the room, two of us now trashed out the issue. Fought. Is a sense of responsibility. You have to start giving him something to do and tell him that you believe he can get it done. And when he fails, coach him on where he failed, but tell him you can still do it. Go. You will accomplish it. Give him a sense of responsibility. A man should not live in the world just existing. A man must always know that he has a contribution, that he is, he is an asset to his generation. Finally, a compelling vision, a compelling manhood vision, something to live for that is other than himself. That's why you see the issue about rejection is not only cured by forgiving your father. For example, now telling you about healing of the manhood wound on your part as a son, you have to forgive your father. You have to risk asking for your father's forgiveness. Because some of you, there is no relationship. You broke down long, conflict, all kinds of things. Even if he doesn't give it to you that day, that's why we say risk. Even if he, he, he reacts and you go, don't worry, one day you will see the impact of that. M me, I wrote a letter. When I tried the talking, it wasn't working. Years after the man pulled the letter, he says the greatest thing he has received. You know, in the house, people say, love, I love you. We don't say that kind of thing. It was too big to come out for your mom because you are not raised. Your father telling me, I love you, what? I believe it. Mm -hmm. If there is no heavenly father, I will be a total failure. Even if you think you are right, when you go to your father, at risk asking for his forgiveness. Third, pull out something for your dad before he dies. When he see angry, it's not the right time to pull it out. It's called the father's blessing. Go get it. Go get it. Risk asking to bless you. If he does, it's something that will happen to your destiny. And the key to doing that is honor. Don't go to him empty-handed with or just begging in your mind. Come to him like what Isaac told his son. Come to him with something. Now, some of us, our parents are no more alive. We have had the conflict that are dead. Don't worry about it. Transit. That's why God has given us to you. Develop father-son relationship with your pastor. Develop it with us. Let me give you a secret about ministry. The pastors in the ministry are helmets for the set man. Just like in their chapters where they are, the associate, the ministerial team they work with are helmets for the pastor of that church. You must transit beyond your relationship with your pastor mothers. You must hook up to your father. You don't have two fathers here. There is something I carry. Every one of you men here need to go to your destiny. We are carrying a dominion mandate like Abraham and his. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Find a way. And it doesn't matter which ministry you are. To make sure that you are connected through honor to your father. If you are in winners, you should find a way to connect. Because there is something that flows down from Aaron's head. That gets down to the skirts of his garment. And what wise mothers do is that after 12, 
there is a time when they are the ones nurturing the son. It's a time they start connecting the sons to their fathers. If they don't, they will lack a sense of identity. They will lack a sense of wholeness. Something will go wrong. And you must do it with honor. It's not a, Father, I love you, just mouth. It is an expression. Nothing should be too big for your father. Nothing. You know what happens? You are the one that gets healed. And then your destiny in its fullness begins to show. You know, I was talking about what a father has to give to the children. I love you. I believe in you. There is this. You are my son. You know who you are. Believe in yourself. Sometimes I say to a pastor, I say, I don't want you to be a, a, an echo. I want you to be a voice. Yes, there is my gene in you. And you are going to, nobody can take it from you. But then as you grow, you will notice that there will be uniqueness about you that will make you different for your brothers. So that when you are in the company of your brothers, you are not intimidated. There was no need for this war the, the family created between Jacob and this son. They should have given them their different unique identities. Because, you know, there are no two you in this whole universe. It's only one. Anybody can say it, to, but when your father says it, he f- establishes something in you. When your pa- father speaks purpose and identity into you, he fixes something. That's how, as a pastor, because a healed man is what goes on to become a mentoring man that becomes a father. All of us as pastors must first trust God to heal our own heart. And then we go to bring healing to the men. If you heal the men, the women will have... Uh, pastor Sarah is in heaven. Men, hurting men, are the ones that destroy society. Broken men at once causing riots everywhere, ruining society. Give a man a sense of identity, a sense of purpose, direction, uh, security that comes from love, it's a compelling vision to live. But give him a sense of, even if you give him all the gun, well, he won't touch it. He has found something to live for. Rob him of all this is a tool in Satan's hand. He faces demons that he can't control. Do you know, no matter how broken you are as a woman, marry a whole man, he fixes you. Correct manhood is Christ-likeness. Christ-likeness. So you won't go at home and be bossing your wife. You become a servant leader. The way Christ could lay down, you would do everything to see that woman become all she's designed to be. It's Christ-likeness. At the age of 12, he started disconnecting from motherhood. He even wanted to connect to Heavenly Father too early, to his purpose and other. They pulled him back. He said, okay, I'm not going to go back and sit with you in the kitchen. I'll join Joseph in the carpentry shop and, and learn mentorship. Because he wanted to be mentored by men, mature men out there. And they pulled him back. He said, okay, Joseph. And that's where he was. That was why the day they came. Your mother and whatever is looking for you. Say, who is my mother? He has emotionally detached. Who is my mother? Who is mine? You never hear one day he went home to beg them for money. If you don't contribute, the crusade will fail or to whatever. You are bringing a disgrace on the ministry, a disgrace on Jesus Christ. You say God has called you. You are still living in your father's house. Manhood is not how much money in your pocket. If you develop that and finally the money will find its way. You can't talk about lion lacking food. No. He's the king of the jungle, my friend. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Okay. You have to go through these stages. There are four stages of separation. You have to have emotional separation first then you're going to have to have physical separation at a stage 
when you have emotional separation, pull towards men. If your father is not there, find a man that will mentor you. Then you have to detach from all this collecting money coming to the store. Then the last is you have to start developing healthy relationship with sisters that lacks abuse. You know why people tell me, men tell me that it's hard to find their wife and all that? It's not true. You should have developed friends. Treat younger women as sisters. There should have been a couple of ladies you help finish school, you help do this without any string attached. Some you even mentored in their faith. Without that sexual thing that is crazy going on out there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When the time now comes for you to marry, it won't be hard. It won't. In every fellowship, in every church, there is this set of men that many of the sisters wish that they would propose to them. They are exhibiting certain manly qualities. Just like you heard that womanhood is attractive to a man, manliness is attractive to women. Ladies look for leaders. Ladies look for visionaries. Ladies look for <laughs> goal-getters. Ladies look for power. You don't have any, at least have intellectual and spiritual. Soon financial and others will join. Ladies are attracted to wisdom. Women are attracted to power. So stop saying, ah, she left me to marry the governor. It's because you have not learned that you are a king. You are also a governor in your own field. A governor is a president over a state. And the local government chairman is a president over a local government. But you may be a president over a business. You may be a president. You know, my daughter said, why is it that they treat you like king in this house? I said, because I'm the president of the Federal Republic of the Obueli family. <laughs> and I said, I didn't come here by vote. So you can't vote me out. Neither can you vote me in. I'm a lifetime president. So. And I said, you see, Pastor Sarah is my vice president. She's a queen. She's not up for vote. So the guy said, eh, that means if you're a king, that means I'm a prince. I said, yes. He said, but what? I don't know where he got that. David, very intelligent guy. He said, what if the king refuses to die? When will I now become a king? <laughs> I don't know where he got that one. Sometimes he asks questions, I'll, I'll do brah. I'll go and think on it for two days. I'll come with the answer. So what if the king refuses to die? When will the prince now become king? I said, the Bible says, so shall a father leave father and mother. I said, the way a prince becomes a king is that you create a new colony for him. I said, if he's a pastor you want to be, there are so many countries in this world that need to be conquered. There are so many cities in Nigeria. I said, if he's business, there are so many land out there to conquer. So what happened is that when you have prepared an Adam for dominion, you remove him from heaven and send him to another call on the planet Earth. Continue there. Do on Earth as we do in heaven. You have opportunity to practice everything after. That's why when a pastor has been thoroughly trained. Don't keep him in the base. What are you keeping him for? Don't you want him to? He has to have opportunity to exercise his gifts, his anointing, and order, and also grow to become a father. So that father can become grandfather and soon become great grandfather. And that's how generations continue. That's how it continues. That's how it continues. That's why when a lion is mature, the father drives him out of the den. Then he goes to find, set up a new den and collect a team of females and a new king of the jungle as he march in another domain. Because kings are territorial animals. Dominion is territorial in crime. To have dominion, you must define your domain. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Every person that is a product of this dominion mandate must seek a territory to go and conquer. 
you must seek a field. Everybody here can become president and founder. That's the kind of ministry we build. Oh. We say raising leaders to transform society. That's why you can become president and founder inside this place. Why? Because we're not building a bathtub. We're not building a swimming pool. We're not building an aquarium. We're building an ocean. Where if you are a shark, grow to your size. If you are well, to your size. If you are tilapia, now your own business. The picture I wanted to show you is this. Number one, you have to disconnect at a particular stage. For the moment you are two of you need to start about some of us have not done it and we are at this stage. You need to disconnect and pull towards a father figure. Number two, you have to, if you are married, let the woman you are married know that this is the challenge I have. I have an overbearing mother. You know, some men have this thing. You have to understand, but I'm letting you know, I'm going to take a stand and do something about it. Don't let that trouble you. If you don't, if you don't bring her into agreement that this is a challenge or whatever, that will be the downfall of your family. Number three, set boundary with your mother. Go sit down with her and have a heart-to-heart -heart discussion. Now, many women who do that will not let go. They will start to enter through. So, depending on what pattern they used to, whatever, they, won't, they will start all those whatever. When you finish having that heart-to-heart -heart discussion, mommy, you know, I'm a man. And I'm even a married man now. Or I'm a banker. I'm earning my own money. And you are still trying to run my life like this. No. For now, I love you as my mom. I respect you. I will honor you. As you get older, I will take care of you. But this area is no go area. You can't walk in into my house and bully my wife. You cannot do it. Then, the next stage is that many of them won't give up because you had that talk. That's what we have discovered. So next time she comes, maybe to try to, you go there and stop her. You say, hey! John, you are doing this to me. Because of this woman, the woman that carried the phenomenon, don't be moved, my friend. That thing is good for her and good for you. It is done once. You take your manly stand, she will learn to respect you. You take your stand. You don't let your sisters come there and harass your wife. You are a liar, my friend. I say if you are part of the, you are even from the tribe of Judah. Lions protect. Let the woman in your life have security and safety. Can I hear somebody say, hey. Amen. Then, the cure for mother's wound does not end with all this. You must get a male to mentor you. Beyond this, there are other disciplines for success that will still be lacking in your life. You need a mentor. If you finish school as a man like that, don't go and start your own thing first. Go work in a setting that is organized where they will hold you accountable, the way they will give you a target, where they will drive you. After you have learned it, you can now go set up your own thing. But you see the ones that are properly mentored by men, they can leave from school and start anything and they will succeed. They can even start it wider in school, they succeed. This other one is not easy. He, they can't cope with the stress of business. They can't cope with the stress of pursuing contract. They can't cope with the, the challenges of life. They will come who complain, complain, because this country is bad. This one happened, my friend. The jungle is a deadly place. But it doesn't threaten a lion. It doesn't. It doesn't. Business sometimes can be tumultuous. There are shakings, but it doesn't threaten a lion. The waves can sometimes be a cause riot in the sea. It doesn't threaten a shark or a whale. When the wave is splashing and doing all that, the shark <laughs> sails through. The wind can sometimes be tempestuous, can sometimes be, you know, rough. It doesn't frighten an ego. What you need is manhood, authentic manhood. But you know, God heals these things in people. God heals it in people.
Amen. Don't you want your men to be men? How many of you ladies want to marry real men? Not mommy's boy. Two healed people who build an Eden, a marriage of Eden, broken people, they create hell for themselves. There is no headache in my house. When I stay you, people think I'm joking. It's true. It's true. But yet it wasn't like that. That's why I tell those stories of the first two years. Because people would think it has always been. No. We worked at it. We worked at it. But I have challenges outside that house. Not in that house. Ultimately, the creator, the heavenly father, he did it for the prodigal son. He's the one that did it for Jacob. It wasn't Isaac that did it for Jacob. And he's the one that would do it for you. He's the one that did it for me. I'm the one that even started taking healing back to my father. He's the one that would do it for you. The only thing that pained Jesus was when his father had to disconnect from him. He said, Father, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? I've done everything you commanded me, even to laying down my life. Why are you now turning your back on me? But that was what was needed to be done because there was no way God can behold sin. He was made sin. And God allowed him to suffer the way we would have suffered. Because what gave Jesus his security is the love of his father. Battle your heads, you know. I don't know if you heard that message of the prodigal song well. I don't know. And if you're a woman, your father was not there for you. There's certain things. If you notice, you have been cheap toys for men. You crave for masculine love and affection. Ask the father to heal that thing in you. To make you whole. A woman that is whole is the one that can now be a blessing to the man that she married. Because there's something a human being can't give you. Father, heal every masculine wound. Heal every Jacob wound. That one that makes us the ugly, the opposite of what you designed us to be. Like the story of the beauty and the beast. And a woman comes into her life like the beauty but we are like a beast. We are hurting. We are filled with bitter waters. That one that cripples our destiny and makes us failures in life. Heal every man here today. Starting with those of us in the ministry. So that we can mature and transit to become genuine spiritual fathers. So that we can mature and become genuine domestic fathers who will nurture our children and our wife that you've given us. As I pray for the men, I pray for the women. The wounds that they are carrying. Some of them, their fathers were not there. The biggest problem women are suffering today. If it's not absent father to help show them love and help build their esteem. It is absent mother because of carrialism. The women today have in a church with other responsibilities that originally were meant for men. They have to go to hunt. They have to go to work. Some are not there for their children. It's a woman that is supposed to guide a girl from the time she's 12. Once puberty starts, guide her into womanhood. Teach her about her body. Show her how to relate with men. Many of us have grown up not knowing all this, not having our mothers in our lives. Some of us have grown up, instead of having a mentor in our mothers, where we had an overbearing mother that never showed us care that ended up bringing developing a Jezebelian attitude in us now some of us have carried it into marriage we don't know how to honor a man we don't know how to submit to a man we don't know how to bring out our femininity heal every life here today 
The young ladies will live here. They will become gifts to whatever man that will marry them. The young men will live here. They will become a special blessing to whatever woman whose life they will enter. Any woman that enters their life will enter into a security, a life of security. Restore all of us back to Eden. To the original plan you have for us. Restore the dominion mandate. You said let the male and female have dominion. Restore it to every life. That the cause of failure is broken. Thank you, Lord. You healed the Jacob of the Bible. I trust you to heal every man and woman here today. We give you praise. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have you been impacted by this message? Please share your experience with Pastor David Obweli. Email address Dominion Image Media at yahoo.com or call 01-792-6879-0803-435-7959-0803-590-9900.